Uh, so I, you guys probably knew that you guys needed a 3-1 or a uh, plus-2 map differential to take the series. Uh, do you guys feel that there was any letdown after losing, you know, the fourth map and kind of eliminating yourselves from the playoffs, or did you guys were you guys still at 100 percent? Do you think on the fifth map? Yeah, I think so. I think we're at 100 percent on the fifth map. We definitely wanted the playoffs, but I have a feeling that in the end, it probably won't matter that much that we did make stage one playoffs. There's like three more after that, and then the actual playoffs that matter after it. So we're not too sad about this. Hi, my name is Nick um, from Inven. Uh, how would you guys respond after such a strong showing um, to the people that kind of uh, regulated um, your team to maybe a middle of the pack team or just people who maybe have um, underestimated uh, Boston Uprising? I feel like throughout the past games, like we were able to prove ourselves in that you know middle or bottom of the pack team. Like with these showings now, I think people will. You know, not underestimate us and consider us like a team to compete for the the finals and stuff. Yeah, I think to them I'd say, was it worth it? Could have put more thought into it. <laughs> hey, Hunter Slayton, I'm with Blizzard. Um, I just wanted to ask, like during uh, media day, you guys seemed like you were having a lot of fun. You were the last press conference there. Are you guys still having as much fun with each other um, as the league is going, or is it all hard work and seriousness now? Both. Yeah. Definitely a healthy mix. We're having tons of fun because we're doing what we love as a job. Like, there's nothing I'd rather be doing more than here playing Overwatch. But it also is like a family with us, so we're always having fun. Hey, Andres from Omnic Lab. This one is for Dream Casper. You're such a versatile player. We've seen you play heroes like Farah, Genji, Roadhog today, and you play them all at a really high level. How do you manage to stay so versatile and play so many heroes at a high level? Is there anything your practice regime or any secrets? Something I do practice, but for right now, I'm keeping it a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no leaks. Hey there, uh, Adam with Action Esports. Uh, so, Dream Casper, you have an amazing road hog. Uh, you've also got a couple of really good tanks on your team, and it looks like for stage two, we're going to be heading more into a, a tank emphasized meta. How do you guys think you're going to perform in stage two, and what are your goals for stage two? I think our goals for stage two is just, you know, it's not necessarily to make playoffs because we still have another goal we're looking at, but if we do make playoffs, it's just like a bonus towards our goal. And with the new meta, I think. I think we have a good shot because like we have a lot of a lot of players on the team. And we can really flex really well, and with with the new meta coming out, is basically which team can adapt the fastest will get a head start in the beginning. I think. This is Justin from the Owl Recap. Uh, just a quick question regarding the teams that are left into the playoffs. Who do you guys want to see win? Who are you guys rooting for? Who is, are there any upset potentials? I think I'd like to see Outlaws win, just because that would uh, I guess make me feel a bit better. But I'm thinking probably NYXL will win. Hi, I'm Mel from Mel Recap. Can you, Kellex, tell me what you think is going to be coming with the new Mercy changes? Are you feeling like you're going to stay playing Mercy ever or maybe in situation? I don't... I don't know what's going to happen with the support meta, but I, I'm almost 100% sure that I, that I won't be playing Mercy again. Uh, Are you sad? Mm, I'm sad and happy at the same time. I like playing Mercy, but I'm happy to finally play something else. Hi, Matt from Variety. Um, so with the rise in popularity in esports and the amount of people watching and playing it, what do you guys think of the potential of seeing esports as an uh, Olympic meddling sport in 2024, and what do you think, if anything, is preventing esports from being thought of in the same kind of league as traditional sports? I think it's mostly kind of, I could say, the view of the common people almost, just like the general populace, what they think on it. If you ask anybody on the street what they thought of like hockey or something, they'd say, yeah, that's an Olympic sport. But until we can I guess possibly convince the public that this would be like truly considered to be a sport. I don't think you could get into Olympics, but I'm hoping to see it soon. 
Hey, I'm Sam from OverwatchScore.com. So they asked already about people underestimating you, and that was happening at first. And then you guys started winning, and people started saying, oh, they can only do dive. And you've been playing all of these other comps now and showing that you can do so much more than just, you know, you're not a bottom of the table team. You're not just a dive team. You can do all of these things. What do you guys think you need to do to get respected as just the well-rounded, like, top of the table powerhouse team that you are? Keep doing what we're doing? Yeah. Yeah, I think as long as we keep showing up and, like, people can't prepare for us, but we can adapt mid-game, and I think showing that will, like, give people a lot of respect. Oh, you can't just make a strategy or comp just for Boston. They'll they'll, they'll learn to, like, you know, adapt on the, the map. So I think until then we'll get respect. Hey there, Adam with Action Esports again. Uh, so what has been your favorite part of stage one so far? Winning against London. <laughs> Being the first team to beat a full Korean team, I think. Yeah, I can agree with My that. favorite moment, at least. I think stage one is more exciting because, like, it, it just shows how fast. I don't think people expected us to, like, improve that fast coming into stage one. So, like, it means a lot to us that how, how far we've come. And it's just, like, our hard work's really paying off. Matt from Variety again. With the amount of time and pressure that you devote to it, how do you keep the game fun for you guys? I play uh, fun heroes in ranked, and I don't worry too much about my SR, and I just kind of try to make the game like as fun as I can outside of scrims so that my love, well, I guess we'll keep getting renewed with it always. I think as long as you have a passion for the game and like, Esports, I think I, for me, I just find it fun every time I get to like wake up and know I get to play Overwatch every day. Great, thank you to Boston Uprising. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.